Infectious mononucleosis is characterized by fever, fatigue, pharyngitis, and lymphadenopathy. When exudates are present, they cannot be distinguished from that due to streptococcal pharyngitis. And although lymphadenopathy most often affects the posterior cervical nodes, it may be generalized. Now while the classic presentation is frequently seen in adolescents and young adults, infants and children are usually asymptomatic or only experience a mild cold, and elderly patients may have a prolonged fever, fatigue, malaise, and myologias. Patients with a rapidly growing spleen may experience upper abdominal discomfort and tenderness. Skin rashes that occur when treated with amoxicillin or ampicillin are not due to allergy and they are not predictive of future adverse events to penicillins. That is, beta-lactams taken after the resolution of infection does not result in a drug fever or rash. And a rash does not just occur with beta-lactams, but can also occur when a person with mononucleosis is treated with another antibiotic, such as azithromycin, levofloxacin, or cephalexin. The characteristic CBC findings include lymphocytosis greater than 50% and atypical lymphocytosis greater than 10%. The most common hematologic complications are autoimmune hemolytic anemia and thrombocytopenia. In a patient with a classic presentation, a negative heterophile antibody test should be repeated after the first week. If it is still negative, then test for EBV-specific antibodies. In some facilities, EBV-specific antibodies are routinely ordered instead of heterophile antibody assays. Due to the risk of splenic rupture, strenuous physical activity and contact sports should be avoided for 3-4 to four weeks. A minimum of 3 weeks is suggested for athletes pursuing non-contact sports, while 4 weeks is recommended for people participating in contact sports or activities such as weightlifting which increase intra-abdominal pressure.